Hey y'all, come on in. It's a Monday evening. All the food was eaten up from yesterday, so I'm having to cook a little something today. But I'm going to make it easy on myself and everybody else. We're going to have some nice soup because I had so many leftovers. So come on in. Hope y'all are having a God-blessed Monday evening. Uh, for those who had to stay home because of this coronavirus or you had to stay home with the children or whatever, hope you had a God-blessed day and use that time uh, for family time or to catch up on some things that you might have needed to do all along. So I have had my exercise class today. I have relaxed today. And so now I'm going to make this soup. So what I've done, I went through the freezer and I went through my refrigerator and pulled out everything that I could pull out. So one of the things that I had, one day last week, I think it might have been Friday, I went to Sam's Club and I purchased my um, usual rotisserie chicken. Did not use but half of it. So normally I take the other half and do chicken salad. But I did not and I'm glad I didn't because what I did, I chopped it up and I'm gonna put it in my soup pot. What I did with the carcass from it though, uh, I took the bone and put about four cups of water in there and put um, and it just boiled it, just boiled it to get that broth. So I got me uh, uh, three or four cups of broth. Now this is the chopped up chicken. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my soup pot. And I also, guess what else I put in there? Remember week before last I made those good old um, healthy um, turkey burgers with the mushrooms in it. So I just took one of those, chopped it up, and put it in there. Cause I'm, you know, I'm going for the flavor y'all cause we're not doing a lot of salt these days. So what I decided to do was chop up one of those burgers and put in there for some extra added flavor. So in that pot, I've got four cups of water so far with where I boiled that chicken carcass off. So now I poured in that chopped up half of a rotisserie chicken. I did some corn on the cob for Sunday dinner yesterday and I had a couple ears left. So I cut it right off the cob and put it in there with that, ch those, I chopped up an onion and some celery. So there goes a medium onion, three ears, of, three half ears of corn, and half a cup of celery. So what we're going to do we're relieving the refrigerator of all those leftovers. I did uh, green beans yesterday, so I'm going to put the green beans in there. Now, listen, if y'all didn't know, when y'all go to these different restaurants and whatnot, and they do soup, they have soup of the day, or that vegetable soup, guess what? This is exactly what they do. They pull out everything that they had left over. And y'all know I'm famous for the leftovers, so I'm getting all my veggies in here. And in my freezer, I went through there, and look what I found. I found about three-fourths of a cup of mixed vegetables. So you know what I'm pouring the mix. It's going to be loaded with veggies. So that's my three-fourths of a cup of mixed vegetables. I had, uh, well, maybe I'll need any more green beans. Let's, we'll see, because I had that. That was about a cup of green beans. And those mixed vegetables had green beans. So I think that's enough green beans. I am going to have to add some more water. I like lots of corn in mine. So I'm going to add a can of corn in there. I'm telling you, it's going to be loaded with veggies. And then you know how to get my tomatoes in. Okay, I might should have used my super big pot, but we're going to see here in just a second. Um, oh. And I got about a half a cup of lima beans that I found laying around the freezer. So I got my half a cup of lima beans that I'm going to pour in there. So like I say, it's going to be, yeah, just about a half a cup of lima beans to pour in there. I've got one, two cans of Hunt's diced tomatoes to go in there. I've already put one. I'm not going to have a lot of room for water. So with all of those ingredients in there, I won't be wanting to add a lot of salt. So this is going to be a really nice thick pot of chicken vegetable soup. Okay. I think we we'll to add it. Oh, I've got, I even found some cut okra, y'all. And y'all know I'm going to slide some okra in there. 
Everybody don't like okra, but you know what? When the okra is sliced and cut up in these small pieces, by the time it gets to cooking, nobody will even know it's in there. Nobody but me and you. Okay? So, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and add some more water in there. And I'm going to let it boil for about a good hour, hour and 15 minutes and let everything cook together. And as you see, I've not put any salt in there. And, and I'm hoping, you know, that I won't have to. Now, I am going to put some tomato paste in there. Okay, that's enough water. I don't want to boil all over the top. But this is just a good way to make a nice pot of vegetable soup. And you know you can freeze this. I don't have any already frozen. That's why I'm making this big old pot. Because I don't have any already frozen. So, this is going to be nice and thick. This is going to be more like a stew than a soup. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some tomato paste in there. And that will thicken the soup up a little bit. So it won't be, you know, as far as the juice, it will be nice and um, rich and thick with that tomato paste. Now this is sort of a, uh, not the small can of tomato paste. This is the, uh, I think this is a 14 ounce can. Let me check so I can give you those measurements. And if you don't need this much soup, but you know, like I said, this freezes so good. This is like a 12 ounce can. So I think I'm probably gonna only add maybe um, six ounces, which would be just half of that can. And that's to give it that uh, good old thick, rich, tomatoey taste. Mmm, yummy. That's gonna be some good old soup in about one hour. We'll be able to sit down and have a nice bowl of soup. Now, Tania's here. Uh, she and Kareem had pizza early. They ate two pizzas earlier. So, if they eat again, guess what they're going to eat? Soup and crackers. Okay, I'm going to put about a tablespoon of black pepper in there. we got to have that black pepper in that soup. And I've got some onion powder. <clears throat> you know about onion powder. Where is it? Onion powder. Well, I tell you what, I do have. Well, I know. I can, oh, there it is, right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put a good teaspoon of a uh, couple of teaspoons of onion powder in there to flavor it up real good. So we got our soup going. So, um, like I said, about an hour and a half, we're going to have a good old pot of soup. And as you see, it only takes a few minutes to get all your ingredients together. Uh, if you didn't have half of a um, rotisserie chicken to use as your base, at, you know, for your, to season it, your meat seasoning in there. If you got any chicken parts or pieces in the refrigerator, legs, thighs, whatever you got, go ahead and boil them up to get your broth and um, get your soup going. And it only takes, it takes a good 20, 25 minutes to get all these ingredients together and get them in a pot. So from freezer refrigerator to the stove on the table, probably a good hour and a half for the best pot of soup that you're probably going to have all year. So hang on for me a little bit and I'm going to go and uh, do a clean up and come back to you in a little while and let y'all look at this good old thick, rich, tomatoey chicken and vegetable soup. So. Hold on just a sec. I'll be right back. Okay, it's soup, y'all. I got my bowl. Getting ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy this good old hot bowl of chicken and ground turkey vegetable soup. There's a the big old pot there, boy. We'll be eating soup for days, y'all. So thank y'all for hanging around while the soup gets ready. Get you a bowl out. You're welcome to a good old hot bowl of soup. Listen, y'all, keep those prayers going up. So the blessings will continue to come down. Continue to pray without ceasing. Love on one another. Get in that kitchen and cook you something good to eat. A good old hot bowl of soup. A good old hot bowl of chili. Either one will work. It's kind of warm, cool outside today. I was going to say warm. It's kind of cool outside today. I'm having crackers today. Tomorrow I might make uh, some good old cornbread to go with it, y'all. We ate up all the cornbread from last night, so... This just might be on the second round, cornbread and soup. So, until I decide to cook again, 
or decide to uh, talk to y'all about something. Oh, by the way, I've got a black history fact because I promised that I was going to continue to do black history facts um, throughout the month, even though black history month throughout this month because we celebrated black history month, but we're going to celebrate it all this year. So I'm going to give you a black history fact at the end of this video. Thank y'all again for tuning in. Thank y'all for standing in the gap. Thank y'all for continuing to pray without ceasing. And most of all, thank y'all for encouraging me, complimenting me, and praying for me. So, until I cook again now, y'all keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. Love you guys. to Toodaloo. Okay, as you can see, there's a beautiful picture depicting... Uh, what went on during black migrations in the 1920s. This was actually the National Black History Month theme for 2019, but I thought I'd share it with you anyway because it has some significant um, facts and little things that you can kind of grab a hold of. So you can kind of uh, think about what it looked like back then. These families, they look really, really good with the children that were traveling cross country from one end of these United States to the other, trying to start a new life. So here we go. Uh, the Black History theme uh, for Black Migrations emphasizes the movement of people of African American descent to new destinations and subsequently to new social realities. While inclusive of earlier centuries, this theme focuses especially on the 20th century through today. Beginning in the early decades of the 20th century, African-American migration patterns included locations uh, from southern farms to southern cities, from the south to the northeast, the Midwest, and to the west, from the Caribbean to the U.S. cities, as well as to migrant labor farms and the immigration of noted African-Americans to Africa and to Europe and cities such as Paris and London. After the end of World War I and World War II, um, such migrations resulted in a more diverse and stratified interracial and intraracial urban population amid a changing social, social um, milieu, such as the rise of the Garvey movement in New York, Detroit, in New Orleans. The emergence of both black industrial workers and black entrepreneurs, the growing number and variety of urban churches, new religions, new music forms like ragtime, blues, and jazz, with a white backlash as in the red summer of 1919, the blossoming of visual and literary arts as in New York, Washington, D.C., Chicago, and Paris in the 1910s and 20s. The theme of Black Migration equally lends itself to the exploration of the centuries later, uh, the centuries later decades from a uh, spatial and social perspectives with attention to new African Americans because of the regarding African and Caribbean population in the U.S., North American North, uh, Northern African Americans return to the South. Racial suburbanization, suburbanization inner city and hyper ghettoization, health and environment, civil rights and protest activism, electoral politics, mass incarceration, and dynamic cultural production. So, this is just some of the things that have gone on by title in the United States from the 1920s even until now. Hopefully you will be able to uh, gain some insight as to what was going on back during that time frame. Now, all this information was gathered by an organization called ASALH.org. So if you'd like to, you can go online and um, Google that particular uh, organization. They have uh, beautiful, wonderful posters and a, a magnet, uh, just a multitude of information that you can seek out. I just thought I'd share uh, a little bit of what went on during Black Migrations. And I, this is a poster that I used in my display last year. 
and I thought I uh, would like to share it with you because those of you who like to dig into black history facts, I thought this would be just something that you would enjoy. But go ahead and uh, go online. It's A-S-A-L-H dot org. Of course, you got www.asalh dot org and look up some of their black history facts. I think they're awesome. Uh, my hat's off to this organization. I've used their uh, posters and bookmarks and They've got all kinds of information out there that you can go and look up and uh, use. If you're in the school system, you can use it for your school children. Or if you just want to teach your children or educate yourself on African American history. So another black history fact or another black history tip. Just something uh, to let you know that as far as I'm concerned, this year, I will be giving you these facts and tips throughout the year. Maybe not every day but at least one or two times a week. If you got something to share with me when you um, read this, look at this video rather, uh, go ahead and give me some feedback and share some of your sources uh, for black information and black history facts. And I will certainly go and research them and look them up. So until the next black history fact, I'm going to say to the loop now, keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. Love you guys. Toodles.